Every leader, no matter the context, whether it's in the business world, educational world, political world, or I think sometimes especially in the ministry world, whether in missions or local church, every leader at some point feels like there are countless voices pushing one direction, and yet we're not sure that's the direction we should go, and there might be a discerning voice or a call from God or some truth point in Scripture going the other direction. What do we do when there are all of these voices of opposition and yet here's the direction we feel? What do we do when there are voices of criticism? It's not even a directional issue or a theological issue or a truth issue, but just criticism these voices that are contradictory and criticizing. What do we do in those circumstances? We all face them. Psalm chapter 3, I was reading a couple of days ago, and I think the Lord really spoke to me through that. Here we go. We see three different contrasts. Uh, there are eight verses, verses 1 through 4. We have this massive contrast um, uh, with all of these voices, and yet God. We have this contrast of many voices, one God. Many opinions, one truth. That's verses 1 through 4. And then we see another contrast that results out of that in verses 5 and 6. And then in 7 is our final contrast we'll get to and we'll conclude in verse 8. And I hope it'll help you as a leader and as you raise up leaders and develop leaders and empower leaders and as you lead people. And that's what spiritual leaders do. Uh, pastors and mission leaders uh, lead people. And so hopefully this will help you uh, what David is talking about in Psalm 3. And this is the time when his son Absalom is uh, seeking him out, and it's a bad situation. It's very emotional, very personal, and very dangerous. And David is fleeing rather than fighting because he wants no harm to come to his son. Here we go. Verse 1. O Lord, how many are my foes? Now watch this word, many. We're going to see it three times in this verse. Many. How many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation. Many foes, many enemies, many opposition, many voices. All of this piling on, verse 3, but you, O Lord. Much opposition, but God. Many voices, but God. Many accusations, but God. Many problems, but God. But you, O Lord. And so, David counters, it's, a, it's an example for leaders, he counters the many voices, not necessarily with the voice of God, but with who God is. And here we go. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and He answered me from His holy hill. And so he starts describing who God is. And there's this contrast of these many enemies and many voices and many contradictions and many accusations, but the one God and the one truth. And so what we do is realize in the midst of the many, we realize who God is and we cry out to God. Uh, every situation, especially when the odds are against us, it's time to cry out to God as a leader. And he says, I cried aloud and he answered me. Now, watch the answer though. This is a dangerous situation uh, for, for David, Absalom, and his army. They're trying to kill David, and he doesn't really want to engage the battle lest he uh, kill his own son or lead to the death of his son, which it did anyway, but he's, he's fleeing. This is dangerous. This is terrifying. This is life and death. This is bodily injury is right around the corner. And watch what he says in verse 5. I lay down and slept. It reminds me of Jesus in the boat when the disciples are freaking out because of the waves and Jesus gets a pillow and lays down and sleeps. Not because he didn't care, but because he wasn't afraid and he wasn't worried. David, this isn't Jesus, this is David. His life is being hunted and he says, I lay down and slept. I woke again for the Lord sustained me. Watch this. I will not be afraid of many. There's the word again, many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. So here's the contrast, all right? First one was these many enemies and one God. Many voices, one God. Many ideas, one truth. Second contrast is a person sleeping 
and fear. And when we're in these fearful situations, whether it's life and death like David or financial decisions that seem like life and death of the ministry or leadership decisions or directional decisions or strategic decisions, all of these things that leaders, spiritual leaders have to do. And then it starts affecting our sleep. And we lay in bed wrestling over um, this voice or that voice or this decision or that. But what David did, he said, I lay down and slept. Verse 6, I will not be afraid. And when we see who God is, we can lay down and sleep and not lay around in bed in fear and not rehearse the fearful things and the worst case scenarios in our mind, but sleep because of the peace of God. So there's this contrast, fear versus sleep. And then the final one is in verse 7. Arise, O Lord. And this is what comes out of the mouth of this man who's in grave danger, but he's sleeping it off. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God. Here's the phrase, my God. For you strike all my enemies. And that is the ultimate contrast. When we look at the opposition as spiritual leaders, and as we train leaders coming up behind us, how to deal with opposition. And it says this, there's my God and my enemies. And really, that's all we need to know. If God is for us, who can be against us? And it's not that we need a list of enemies, but this is obviously David didn't create a situation of enemies, but someone saw him as an enemy and was after his life. But he says, oh God, save me, my God. Save me, my God, from my enemies. And that's really the easiest contrast to see the, ver the, the difference of God and enemies of God, and enemies of God people. And so what he says finally, and this was a kind of a hard one here, he says, you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Um, not sure I've ever prayed that one, but this is out of the mouth of David. And then finally it ends with this, salvation belongs to the Lord, your blessing on your people. And it ends with, all of the opposition, many people. And then he says many thousands of people. And yet the psalmist ends with the blessing of God. And as leaders, no matter what's going on around us, no matter how unfair and unjust the accusations and the enemies might be, and no matter how life and death and financial life and death and all that it might be, we've got to see that our God is bigger than all of that. Therefore, we can sleep at night. We can wake up the next day and realize this last verse, God's blessing be on His people, even if others are speaking curses. So, as leaders, the blessing of God is on you. So sleep soundly and wake up in faith tomorrow.